I think we're live. Ah. Uh, it says live in the corner there. It nice. still says starting up in the other side. You're now live. There we go. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday. And we're going to sing a children's song this morning. Not really a children's song. It's about children. It's about us being children. And our devotion is about simple things. So, this is Children of the Heavenly Father, and according to our records here, we have not sung this in our devotions yet. Oh, that's amazing. a surprise. It's a, oh, who knew? It's number 725, if you are singing along with us. Children of our Heavenly Father, safely His own dark and nourished in His holy court, safe flourish from all evil things He spares them in His mighty arms He bears them. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord His children sever. Unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrows all he knoweth. Though he giveth or he taketh, God is children never forsaketh. There's a loving purpose solely to preserve them. like that desk Kent. I'm glad. I have a little story to tell about it, though. Um, that desk Kent has lived with me since I was a little girl, um, and I remember the wonderful experience of singing in a choir that consisted of all my cousins, <laughs> my Eifert cousins, on the occasion of uh, my grandma and grandpa's 50th wedding anniversary. And I already knew the song because Dad was my junior choir director and we had learned it. But it was so special to sing with all my cousins who I rarely saw for our grandma and grandpa. And my mama can correct me if it really was another occasion, but I'm pretty sure it was that one. I haven't met your Eifert cousins. No? The Eifert family is spread all over North America. Um, mostly Canada, so uh, harder for us to, and they don't have a big reunion every every other year like the Bickle family does. But we um, learned this desk cant so solidly that I have <coughs> never, ever forgotten it. Well, it's a very natural desk cant. It just sort of, it floats. just sort of goes. Yeah. yeah. It's from the Green, the Green Children's oh. Choir Book. We always called it the Green Children's Choir <laughs> Book. <laughs> so we're in Second Kings chapter 6 today, and kind of an odd story. Ready, go away. That's the dog. <laughs> Second Kings 6. Now, the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See, the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, and each of us get there a log, and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, my master, it was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, Take it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. This is a very strange story. <laughs> this is very unusual. First of all, just some sort of ordinary background. 
um, when they're going to build a house, they want to build a larger structure for them to stay in because there's a lot of profits, evidently. Um, and they go down to the Jordan to get wood because it's a pretty arid country and there's not a lot of trees of any significant size except down in the river valley. So, so they go down there and, they're gonna, and the logs that they're cutting are really for roof poles. They're, they are, uh, they're not going to build log cabins, okay? This is not Little House on the Prairie. They build, they, they make uh, bricks, build it up, and then they have the, the logs on the top, and then they make their roof with that. So that's what that's about. And, uh, and an iron axe head, that's really valuable. That's a, that's a commodity. That's something you borrow from somebody else. You don't, doesn't everybody, not everybody has one. And it falls in the Jordan, but, yeah, you know, uh, the Jordan River is not that big. Yeah, I would say it's like maybe four or five times the size of our creek back here. Mm-hmm. And not in width, but in depth. It's about the same width, maybe just a little bit wider. Mm-hmm. Um, at least the places where we were at the Jordan, it was not this rapidly flowing at the time we were there. Uh, I'm sure different seasons, you know. But, and an iron axe head would go straight down. It's not like uh, when I lost my sunglasses years ago in the Rifle River, which is not, which is hardly a river at all, and it's only a couple feet deep, but I knocked them off my head. They went down, but they could be swept down the stream, and so I never found them. But an axe head, that's going to go plunk, and you know right where it is. And a person should have been able to wade in and pick it up right um so so it's an it's an interesting perplexity this is a very simple problem this is not parting the seas so that people can get you know to be saved from an enemy army this is not raising the dead this is not curing leprosy this is just oh i dropped something and i can't reach it right away right <laughs> Uh, does God do miracles like that? I have friends who like to talk about God winks. With my apologies to them, <laughs> I'm I'm often a little skeptical or frustrated by those things because, ah, uh, granted, some people understand this appropriately and some people inappropriately. Um, some people think that these little God winks, the sun coming through a cloud, uh, a bird flying at a certain time, a, uh, uh, a shape in the clouds, a rainbow at a certain time or a certain place, um, things like that, uh, a, a green light just as you came up to it, what, whatever. I've, I've heard people interpret a lot of different things as God winks. Um, and sometimes we take them as with deep theological meaning. God is telling me because I was thinking about this, or I was about to do this, and then I got this God wink, this nice little thing that happened. And so I'm convinced that God is approving of my decision. That's that's kind of dangerous ground. You're you're adding content to... If, and you know what? If maybe God wink is an appropriate term, because what does it mean when somebody winks at you? Huh? What does it mean when somebody weeks at you? Sometimes it means, I'm kidding, I'm not serious. Uh, sometimes it just means, sometimes it means I like you. Uh, sometimes it's flirting. Mostly, though, a wink is just a friendly, um, I see you. And and it's, a, it's just a, a loving gesture, right? Uh, like a like a smile, or maybe a maybe a smile would be better than a wink as a way of describing what these things are. God does ordinary things sometimes, in fact, all the time, to show us His love. I I can think of so Jesus raises the dead, you know, heals lepers, does all these crazy things, but in Matthew seventeen, He. Uh, uh, they get to Capernaum, and the tax collect the people who collect the the two drachma tax come to him, to Peter and say, "Doesn't your master pay the tax?" And Peter goes to Jesus, and Jesus says, "Who pays the taxes? The 
the uh, the king's sons or the king's uh, servants and citizens. Well, not the sons; it's the it's the others, right? So Jesus says, so we really shouldn't have to pay the tax because we're sons of the king, right? But he says, just because to be nice, we'll pay the tax, and he t he sends Peter to to the to the Sea of Galilee, uh, just down the street. Go down to the dock, throw in a line with a hook. He doesn't even necessarily say put bait on the hook or anything. Just throw in a line, pull out the fish, and in the in the fish's mouth you'll find a coin that'll cover my tax and your tax. <laughs> okay, that's a miracle, but it's a sort of silly miracle, right? It's, it is a miracle to show, hey, uh, we'll go along with these people. It is a miracle to show uh, in a sort of fun way, I I love you and I'm going to cover your obligation too. It didn't have to, it, they didn't have to do it. Peter was not poor. He was a business owner. Um, he could have come up with the money for the tax. But, and just as this man, I think, probably could have found the axe head on his own. But God does things sometimes just because he loves us. Look around you. You're surrounded by God's smiles, God's winks. All around you, evidence that, yeah, God is just good. Not only in the summertime. Uh, the, the sunshine <laughs> here in Michigan, oh, we're excited. Ooh, it's blue sky. Because <laughs> we live with, we're surrounded by the Great Lakes. We have lots of clouds. Um, and clean air and a, a smile of a friend, a phone call, a green light. God is good. And day by day, moment by moment, he provides us all we need. This is in the middle of corrupt kings and, and awful stuff and, uh, and, and so on. Horses and chariots of fire tomorrow. We'll see what that's about. Uh, God just gives us simple blessings. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We look at the news, we see powers and principalities, you know, fighting and, and lying and corruption. We look in our lives, we see many illnesses and broken things. But we look around us and we see constantly our daily bread, our, our shelter, our transportation, our, our bodies and our strength. A, a night of rest, uh, the blessing of, of a loved one, a spouse or a friend. You give us these things. Oh Lord, maybe they don't seem miraculous to us and yet we are not entitled to any one of them. That we have all these things, this is a good reminder of your smiling face, your love for us. Thank you, Lord. Especially, Lord, thank you for the cross of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the, the broadest smile there could be that you gave your Son for us. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.